So one of the most frustrating aspects of working in a writer's room is draft management. If you forget to do something like file a draft or track changes, then it's really hard to fix that mistake and often you lose information that's causing problems down the line. In our studio, this becomes much simpler because we do everything for you in the background. And if you forget to do something, you can do it later and don't have to worry about it. I wanna give you a quick tour through Arc Studio to show you how that works and how it's gonna make your life so much simpler. So this is what draft management usually looks like. It's a folder full of drafts and it's really confusing. So the first thing I wanna show you is how you file a revision, how you file a draft. Usually you do this by making a copy and putting it in a folder like this. So what you do is you go into the sidebar you select drafts, take snapshot. And this also works with a shortcut, command, shift and S. Now you just choose a name and optionally you can also choose a revision color. And that's it and it's filed and there's nothing else you have to do. We call it a snapshot because it is a milestone in the project that you wanna keep around for future reference. And the snapshot with a color assigned is what we call a revision. And also if you forget to do this, this is not a big deal. Let's pretend we forgot to file the second revision. Now, if you were working with Final Draft, this would be a big problem. This would be just a gap in your history. But in ArcStudio, it's really easy to file it later. So what you do is you go into Full History, and here you see these autosaves. And autosaves are snapshots that we create for you whenever you stop writing for 10 minutes. So you can expand these autosaves, and now you can choose the, the snapshot that should have been filed, and click Turn into Snapshot. And now you, again, choose a name, we want this to have a revision color as well. And there it is. So if you forget to file something, no problem. You can do it later. Somebody else can do it later. It's always going to be there in the background. Next, let's talk about change tracking. In the top bar, you see change marks are off. And if you want to turn them on, just select the current version. And now anything that you type will show up in color. If you want to hide small individual changes, you can do that from the formatting bar. Down here you see the revision mark menu. If you select hide selected marks, it hides the cursor selection in the paragraph. Hide all hides all revision marks in the active paragraph, but not the whole document. And if you wanna hide all marks in a document, you can do so from the top menu. Now you can select hide all, and they won't show up in your draft. But again, what if you forgot to track something? In Final Draft, this would be catastrophic. You wouldn't be able to see the changes later on. But here it's super simple. So here we're tracking, but let's say we should have tracked from the second draft. Now we can jump in here, select change snapshot you're marking from, and then select the draft you want to track from. And now we see the changes highlighted since the first draft. It's as if we had started tracking then. And you can do this as many times as you like. You can always, you can jump between drafts. Whatever you want to see, you can see it. And again, this is because we are tracking changes in the background for you and you're just highlighting what you want to see. But every, all the information is there, all the information is tracked automatically and you don't have to worry about forgetting to do that. Another useful thing is that you can choose how you see the changes highlighted. So here I'm having them highlighted by author, so I see who did what. But I can also change it to by revision and then I see the collated revision colors. And another very useful thing is that you can navigate your draft by jumping between changes. So you have these arrows here and they take you from one change set to the next. And this is super useful if you have a bigger draft that's under edit. So next I want to show you how you can look up changes in your history. So as you can see, your whole history is filed in a very intuitive timeline. And compare this to this where everything is just in a pile and you don't know which came first. It's always clear which draft is the latest one. So it doesn't happen that two people edit two different drafts at the same time, but everything is organized neatly. We also attach a lot of metadata for you, so you don't have to record it yourself. For example, we add the date, who filed it, and we also add who contributed changes to this draft. So if you want to open an older draft, just click it. So you see right away, this is printed on recycled paper. So you don't accidentally edit the wrong version, but it's really clear this is an older file draft. So inside one of the older drafts, one thing you might want to do is get back a scene or a piece of dialogue that you deleted two weeks ago and change your mind about, you want it back. So we also have this change mark menu in the top bar and here we can enable revert mode. And what revert mode does is it highlights all the changes that were made since this draft and it highlights stuff that was deleted in red and stuff that was added in green. If you have your drafts organized like this and you open them up, it's really hard to see what has changed. 
they all look the same, there are no highlights, and you have to basically read them all to find the stuff that you need. There's a change report functionality in Final Draft, but it's even more work and you need to run it for each file. But here you see everything that was deleted at a glance, so you can jump through the drafts until you find what you're looking for. So here I see the dialog that I want back, and now I just click this bubble over here, this undo bubble, and I confirm, and now it's back in the latest version. And this will make you much more confident when you edit because it's clear to you that everything you do can be undone. You just do the edits you want, you delete the scenes that you want, and if you change your mind later, you just jump into the history, it's a few clicks and you can get anything back. Another useful thing is that you can highlight changes made within a revision. And this gives us everything in the blue revision. All the changes are highlighted in blue compared to the previous white revision. Had we selected made in the snapshot, we would get all changes in the snapshot only. But for example, we could also jump into a different draft and select to see the changes made since this revision by author and we know who did what edits. So to sum it up, if there's one thing you should take away from this is that you don't have to worry about forgetting to do something. Everything is done for you in the background, so you cannot lose any data, you cannot forget to track changes, you cannot forget to file drafts, everything is available if you need it when you need it. That's it for draft management, thanks for watching.